and not knowing that you're infected. Many patients spend years misdiagnosed only to find out that they have Lyme disease, a debilitating illness that is spread through tick bites. For most people, it's caught early. Lyme disease is treatable if that happens. But left untreated, it can cause long-term medical issues. New Center's Vivian Lee is here to explain about how that happened to two women in the Midcoast. Viv? Well, Pat and Cindy, for years, Paula Jackson Jones and Angel Rice suffered from debilitating health symptoms. It turned out to be Lyme disease. It spread to their brain and nearly cost them their lives. But thanks to health providers willing to work outside federal medical health guidelines, they got their lives back. Now they're trying to prevent other patients from falling through the cracks. Now we are streaming this story live on Facebook, and if you have questions, post them in our comment section, and we'll try to answer them after the story airs. After raking up leaves on a beautiful fall day, Paula Jackson Jones found something on her body that would change her life forever. And there was a tick embedded in the, the side of me. She flushed it down the toilet. A week later, she started having anxiety attacks. What Paula didn't get was a bullseye rash and the flu. Early symptoms of Lyme disease would show up in less than half of confirmed cases. Not thinking it had anything to do with that tick bite, Paula went to her doctor. I was not even making the connection at that point. I just knew that I, I had uh, issues sleeping, I had unexplained headaches. Um, initially, they put me on an antidepressant and an anti-anxiety medication. Her symptoms spread to full-blown anxiety attacks, muscle spasms, debilitating pain and fatigue. It settled in my spine, and at that point, I kept feeling like somebody was poking me with an ice pick. Six months later, she told her doctor about the tick bite, but a test for Lyme disease came back negative. Most providers use a two-step blood test recommended by the CDC. It checks for evidence of the antibodies against Lyme disease bacteria. If the first step is negative, no further testing is recommended. But some experts say that test is unreliable, failing up to 36% of the time, even within 30 days of a tick bite. Paula, in the meantime, continued to decline, but doctors couldn't give her a definite answer as to what was wrong with her. I had been, you know, diagnosed with MS. I was shaking. None of this treatment worked. None of it. MS, to Parkinson's, none of this worked. Now my arms and legs aren't working. Two years after seeing 23 different doctors and four negative tests for Lyme, Paula found what she called a Lyme literate provider, a naturopathic doctor willing to treat her symptoms without a positive test for Lyme. I credit her with saving my life. A long-term dose of antibiotics, herbal remedies, and other alternative treatments helped her regain her health. Out-of-pocket testing confirmed that she had late-stage neurological Lyme and several other tick-borne diseases. Five years after that tick bite, she met Angel Rice. Angel was bit by a tick at the age of 13, but didn't get diagnosed with Lyme until she was 30. I just felt like I'm going to be an eternal sufferer, and that to me was not the quality of life I wanted. For years, she lived with migraines, anxiety, and depression, and like Paula, she finally found a doctor willing to treat her symptoms. Together, the women started Midcoast Lyme Disease Support and Education. The nonprofit holds support groups, provide education to prevent Lyme disease, and connects patients to providers who are willing to practice outside the CDC guidelines. A lot of the patients that come here have been to three, four, five, six different doctors. Dr. Jill Mahoney gave up her family medical practice to focus full-time on patients suffering from Lyme. She says how to diagnose and treat Lyme disease is controversial. The CDC recognizes Lyme as a medical condition, but does not recommend more than four weeks of antibiotics for treatment. Other organizations, though, believe longer antibiotic treatment is necessary. The infection is a persistent infection um, and um, develops ways to ev evade the immune system and re often requires a longer course of antibiotics. Call it for a follow up. Dr. Mahoney also treats symptoms of Lyme and other tick borne diseases with herbal remedies and diet restrictions. When their immune systems recover, some patients end up with a positive test for Lyme and on the road to recovery. Those that don't see these patients on a regular basis, you know, think that we're just throwing stuff at them, you know, throwing antibiotics at them, throwing herbs at them, and, and um, you know, giving them false hope. But I wouldn't be doing this if my patients weren't getting better. 
Now, Paul and Angel say their Lyme disease is in remission, and for more information about detection, diagnosis, and treatment of Lyme disease, as well as resources about providers who treat patients without a positive test for Lyme, just go to our website and mobile apps. And stay with us on Facebook. We'll be talking to Dr. Jill Mahoney about Lyme disease. Vivian Lee, News Center, Maine. All right. Okay, hey, Facebook, we're going to come over here and talk to Dr. Mahoney. Of course, she was featured in our story. And since we put this story up on social media, we had a lot of comments, lots of engagement, people really curious about what they can do living with Lyme or different treatment options or even about providers. So let's go over here and talk to her. Hi, Dr. Mahoney. Hello. Thanks for coming in and talking to us no tonight. And we do have a couple questions that have come in. Great. Dr. Jill Mahoney, of course, from Scarborough Integrative Health. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Now, let's just start with some questions. Um, they've really started to come in. Um, this is one I found pretty interesting. Can a bad miscase of Lyme disease cause blindness? Oh, gosh. Well, the, about Lyme disease, Lyme disease can affect every system. Um, it's the new great imitator, um, so it can affect um, your brain, your eyes, your heart, your lungs, um, your muscles and joints. So um, essentially, um, blindness is, you know, obviously an extreme example, but um, certainly possible. Okay, this is probably one you hear a lot about. Um, having muscle weakness three years after my Lyme diagnosis. Is there a specialist in Southern Maine that can help me? Well, you are. You're I in am. Southern Maine. <laughs> I am. Um, certainly, you know, I have to need to learn more about their um, treatment protocol and, and and what that entails and if they were on current current treatment. Um, um, you know, what I see a lot uh, with patients with Lyme disease is they can be treated initially, rebound, do very well, and then, um, you know, three months, six months, a year later, their symptoms recur and they need um, to be treated again. Um, sometimes that's because not all the morphological forms of Lyme disease were addressed um, early on, but this is a, a persistent um, bacteria, uh, again, that tends to evade the immune system and um, can cause persistent symptoms. Of course, this is when we hear a lot of what can a patient do when they get um, an inconclusive test that this person said they weren't sure about the right term, but they don't have the telltale signs, the rash, the flu symptoms. Okay. So about uh, half, of the, half of those with Lyme disease do not get the typical erythema, migraines, rash, do not have the typical presentation. So um, you really need to um, look at your environment, how, how um, common Lyme disease is in the area. Obviously, it's um, endemic and epidemic in Maine. Um, look at the symptoms, and unfortunately, because the testing is um, not the best and we need more research to get better testing, a lot of doctors, um, myself included, treat patients empirically, empirically with the antibiotics and um, monitor their improvement. Um, so a negative test um, does not mean that you do not have Lyme disease. Is there any allergies connected to Lyme disease, people want to know? Is there uh, food allergies, anything else like that? Um, I mean, I do find that my patients who have had Lyme disease seem to um, develop other ailments. So um, a lot of my patients with Lyme disease can develop thyroid, Hashimoto's thyroiditis after um, acquiring Lyme disease, food allergies, um, uh, uh, recurrence of Epstein Barr bar virus. Um, so, you know, uh, our thought on that is Lyme disease tends to compromise the immune system and allow these um, things to show their face. This one's a little more specific. I had one band 23 that showed past infection, and I have been having debilita debilitating neurological issues for a year. I'm desperate for answers. Is 23 uh, Borrelia specific? 23 is one of the Borrelia specific bands. Again, our testing does not say if it is past or present infection. So um, again, um, if it's an IgG band, it doesn't necessarily indicate that it was past infection. It could be present. And if you have ongoing symptoms, then I would recommend seeking help. 
All right, this person, Susan Lewis, writes, my test did not come in positive until five years later when I had someone order the Western blot test. Why isn't this test um, more, why isn't it offered, um, ordered more often is what she's trying to okay. ask. Um, so the CDC guidelines are a two-tiered screening method for Lyme disease. The ELISA test is the initial screening test. If that is positive, it is followed by the Western blot. Unfortunately, the Western blot is a poor screening test. Most screening tests should be 95% um, at least sensitive. Um, the Western blot at best is 65 to 70% sensitive in, 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 in some um, literature is much less than that, around 40%. So um, the two-tier testing method, um, in my opinion, is inherently flawed, and that's why um, folks don't get on to go on to get the Western blot. Oh, pretty great, good questions here. I was bit by a tech tick, excuse me, in the head about a week later. I had a fever 103 degrees and body aches. I'm on doxycycline. Did I mm -hmm. get that right? Uh, will this prevent Lyme disease if I started it within two weeks of being bit? Mm -hmm. Generally, if you're, if you're treated, you know, within several weeks of the, of the illness with a, a, a proper course of antibiotics, those patients generally do well um, and don't have any uh, persistent symptoms. Okay, my fiance, Robin writes, uh, was doing landscaping, was bit by a tick several times. He had the bullseye, but he had, because of negative tests, no one will help. Now he's been diagnosed with fibromyalgia. You hear this a lot, right, in mm -hmm. your practice, patients coming Absolutely. to you? Absolutely, yeah. So the bullseye rash in and of itself, regardless of testing, is diagnostic for Lyme disease. So if you have a bullseye rash, you should be appropriately treated with antibiotics. Um, so I would encourage that person to find someone to Well, this down. is a pretty involved question. This uh, woman, Pat, is asking about how to deal with a young child that's been visit bitten. My grandson had a deer, t deer tick embedded in his leg. We found it on Monday, May 7th. Um, they gave him a course of um, moxicillin, I mm -hmm. guess, because uh, my grandson was too young for doxicillin. Is this the common protocol if it's caught within a certain time for children? I don't know if you treat children, but mm -hmm. as far as, is there a little bit different protocol for children? Children are, are, more, are more often treated with amoxicillin. Um, you know, it's safer in children than doxycycline. Again, you know, the ILADS guidelines um, for a tick bite is to treat, you know, uh, anyone with a tick bite with four to six weeks of antibiotics. Um, so I think if that child is treated with four weeks of amoxicillin, they should do well. Okay, my daughter, Nicole writes, uh, was allergic to doxy and other antibiotics. The CDC, there is nothing more that she could, that could be done. She is now having seizures and is on daily medication for those seizures. Um, is there anything else that can be done? We've got a lot of patients here that are really concerned about their family member's health. Sure. Sure, absolutely. I would just re review if they are indeed allergic to all antibiotics. There are multiple antibiotics that can treat Lyme disease. You know, people focus on doxycycline, but there are um, multiple antibiotics that can treat doxy. Um, chlorothromycin is the one most used in the summertime. Um, and, um, you know, with prolonged infection, people can have um, neurological activities, um, persistence of disease, but again, I would explore with that patient really if they couldn't tolerate all antibiotics to treat Lyme because there are quite a few that you can use. Well, this is a, one that's a little different. Hannah is asking, what's the best diet to be on if you have Lyme disease? Yeah. So most naturopathic providers, um, naturopaths are in general are the um, doctors who've really addressed this um, this illness head on for years. But m most naturopathic and naturopathic providers and myself as well um, encourage patients to have a gluten-free um, diet, avoid alcohol, dairy-free as well, um, and um, to eat as much um, clean, clean food as necessary. Right. As, we talked about yeah. this when we sat down. Additional tick-borne diseases are also transmitted by the same tick bite, ripes barb hunt. What symptoms should doctors be looking for when co-infections co are present and what additional treatment <laughs> protocol should be considered, especially for Babesia, which is one of those tick-borne illnesses, right? Sure, absolutely. So Babesia and Bartonella are one of the, the two of the most common chronic infections in addition to Borrelia. Typical symptoms of Babesia are drenching night sweats and shortness of breath. Bartonella can cause an array of symptoms. Um, including pain to the soles of the feet, um, uh, in strange rashes, um, often uh, anxiety and psychological symptoms inc including paranoia. All of the symptoms of the tick-borne illnesses um, tend to overlap, so um, it can be hard to distinguish um, sometimes what um, infection is causing what. 
but uh, for all patients presenting with tick-borne illness, um, they should be um, evaluated for the co-infections, including Bartonella, uh, excuse me, Bartonella, uh, Babesia, Ehrlichia, Anaplasma. Can you recommend any labs, um, particularly Dr. Mahoney, for Lyme testing if they come up with a negative diagnosis? Absolutely. So um, I use MDL labs in my practice, which is the same lab used by um, Spalding Rehab in Boston at the Dean Center for Tick-Borne Illness. That lab includes BN31 and 34, which is most specific for Lyme disease, um, but is not um, tested by most, most commercial labs. Um, can you discuss about the tick-borne illnesses that people should be aware of and how are they also treated? Because a lot of times they do present with Lyme disease, right? Mm -hmm. So the tick-borne illnesses in general, um, you know, patients will present in Lyme disease, typical symptoms are cognitive dif difficulty, fatigue, joint pain, Babesia, as I mentioned, night sweats and shortness of breath, and Bartonella. Um, you know, array of, an array of symptoms, including psychiatric symptoms. So we just tend to take the whole clinical picture um, into perspective and to treat the patient in accordance with their clinical presentation. Um, I don't know if you can answer this one, but what's the typical protocol for patients who have both Lyme disease and chronic um, levitis? It's all also led to permanent vision loss. These vision questions are coming up quite a bit. I don't know if you want to read that. I probably oh uveitis. Okay. <laughs> oh, uveitis. Okay. So me. uveitis. So uveitis. The the again with Bartonella, um, the Bartonella infection, it can often present with. Um, ophthalmological symptoms, uveitis, and, and prominent neurological symptoms. So if someone uh, presents with a uveitis and you're concerned about Lyme disease, you really need to think about Bartonella in addressing that co-infection. Is chronic joint pain um, a possible symptom of Lyme? Absolutely, absolutely. It's one of the textbook symptoms. Um, it, the in, Lyme disease was initially discovered by um, rheumatologists, so um, joint pain was considered one of the hallmark symptoms, although um, certainly a person can have Lyme disease and not present with acute joint pain. Sharon is writing as she says she feels like her skin is on fire all the time. Absolutely. Is that another again, thing you hear from? Again, yeah. you know, Lyme disease can present with any symptoms. Um, skin being on fire, that's a symptom of neurological pain, um, and neurological pain um, is definitely common with Lyme. Um, uh, Sue wants to know about alpha-gal. Uh, alpha-gal. Yeah, a tick-borne illness called alpha-gal, is that something you've ever heard of? I'm not sure what that is. Okay, okay, and then other people want to know about, um, do these early antibiotics also prevent those co-infections as well? All of the antibiotics, doxy, if, you, if you're treated with an impure course of doxycycline, um, that will address um, essentially most all the tick-borne infections with the exception of Babesia. So Babesia is a protozoa, um, it needs to be, it, like malaria, and um, you use malarone to treat Babesia. Right, exa exactly. So we've gotten quite a few questions today. And where can people go to get more information? Um, just what are some um, websites you could recommend the resources? So, yeah, so um, ILADS, www.ILADS.org um, has, a, 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 has a wealth of information. The Midcoast Lyme Disease Support and Education, right. again, wealth of information. Um, those two websites is, is where it's And what does ILADS stand for? International Lyme and Associated Disease Society. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Of course, we've got our story up on our website and mobile apps with lots of information. We've also included links also to the CDC guidelines. It's important for people to get pr pretty much the whole picture and what they need to look for. And thank you again, Dr. Mahoney, for being with us thank today. Thank you. Thank you.